Hi everyone, it's Joy here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm super excited that I get to share Tim Holtz's new Distress watercolor pencils. So I wanna say thank you to scrapbook.com for sending me these products so I could play with them. Here is set number four, and there's lots of beautiful colors in here, of course, and then there's also Picket Fence and Black Soot. I'm gonna create two projects with this using two different uh, ways of using the watercolor pencils. So I have die cut from mixed media white uh, paper pad from scrapbook.com. I have die cut the Market Bloom florals and we're just gonna color these. So I'm just laying down some color and then blending it out with some water. Of course, these are water reactive, they're watercolor pencils. So I am using for these flowers, saltwater taffy. This right here is carved pumpkin and I'm also going to use festive berries. The greens that I'm gonna use are shabby shutters and mowed lawn. The other colors that are in here, oh, I'm also gonna be using scattered straw, so that's in here. Then you also have, that I'm not gonna be using, is evergreen bough, chipped sapphire, Victorian velvet, tea dyed, and ground, ground espresso. I will be using no, I won't. Actually, that is wrong. <laughs> but there is also wilted violet. I thought I used that, but I did not. So those are all of the colors that are in here. So it's a nice, good, you know, you have you have a little bit of every color, which is really, really nice. So this one here, I am just going to add the color to the center and blend it out. I like this one a lot. I think it just turned out so pretty. That is the saltwater taffy. This is the festive berries. And as you can see, the coloring goes really quick. And these dyes, some of them have the embossed detail, like these little flowers. So I'm trying to highlight that a little bit with the colored pencil. So when you blend it out, it still has a little bit of a dark area. This is the mowed lawn. So I'm just adding color in the center and then I can blend that out. These little guys here are also mowed lawn. And then I have some leafier kind of sprigs that I will use the shabby shutters on. But you can see how nicely this blends out. I mean, obviously this is an easy way to color things. It's quick and easy. I sometimes when you're, especially if you're coloring a lot of images, quick and easy is good. And the colors of course are beautiful because we all love, you know, Tim Holtz distress colors. Here's the shabby shutters. This is a nice light green kind of a yellowy kind of green. So I'm just adding something to the stem, the color to the stem, a little bit to the leaves, and then of course, blending this out. Now these, some of these dies have some layering pieces. So I have die cut everything else that I'm gonna layer on here with gold mirror cardstock from Spellbinders. I'm gonna add that to the centers of these flowers. Some of them have a kind of like a, I'm gonna call it a frame, but a top layer piece like the leaves have. And I just think adding the gold is a, adds a little something extra, which I think is so pretty. So let's get these centers in here. I'm using the Artiste glue from scrapbook.com. It's a nice glue. It, it gives you enough working time, and, but it also doesn't take forever to dry, which is really, really nice. I'm just using my reverse tweezers to hold these in place. I don't know what I would do without reverse tweezers. And I do remember the first time I got them when I had been using regular tweezers and I felt so special because I just wanted to squeeze and I'm like, why do I keep dropping things? It was, it was very interesting. Okay, so now that those are done, let's add a little bit of water coloring to a background, to our background panel. This is from the white mixed media paper pad from scrapbook.com. I'm trying to get my line tape down, but my paper kept moving. Not that this has to be perfect because my flowers are gonna cover it up. I just needed a visual of where I wanted this to be. So I'm using saltwater taffy, festive berries, and carved pumpkin. I will say there was no point in using saltwater taffy because you just ended up not seeing it. But I want to lay down this color. I ended up having to do it twice, but once you've watercolored on top of it, you can't really color again. I had to kind of color down below. So I would say get it really dark first because what I wanted to do was drag the color down the bottom to the bottom of the card. But as you can see, it's fairly light. 
but look at how pretty that looks. So I just have some water on my brush and I'm pulling that down and it just needed to be a little bit darker. So once it dried a little bit, I added some color underneath. I did use my heat gun to speed up the drying process because I didn't want to sit and wait. And so I'm going to add a little bit more color. And so I'm gone much darker now, as you can see. So this is what I should have done at the beginning. And then when I pull this color down, it comes down a lot more and looks so pretty. Isn't that beautiful? And then I added the saltwater taffy here. It, you can't see it. <laughs> so there's kind of really no point, but I love how that turned out. So I will use my heat tool again to dry this, and then we can start putting our flowers on here. Some of these I will pop up with some foam adhesive. These are the foam adhesive strips from scrapbook.com. I absolutely love these. They hold so nice. The height of them is really, really good. The uh, release paper peels back so nicely, so I love these. And they're easy to trim down into smaller little pieces. So I'm leaving the top part white, of course, I like having this kind of def this defined line that the flowers and leaves are creating. I did stamp the sentiment, but I totally forgot to record it, but it is from the Spring Animals stamp set and it says love, and I will stamp that with black ink. But I'm just trying to figure out how I want this floral arrangement to look. I don't want it to be equal on both sides. I want it to be more random. Sometimes it's hard to make things look more random and you're, when you're doing it, it's just so weird. So let me add this big guy here. I love these big leaves. I love that they have that a die cut layer on top. I think it's so pretty and I really enjoyed using the gold because you guys know I love everything gold. So let me tuck this guy in here. Now I, I left this process in because you guys could see sometimes it's hard to figure out your layout. Sometimes you want things to look a certain way and I had to keep in mind that I wanted to stamp the sentiment there. I knew it wasn't gonna be a big sentiment. I do love small sentiments. I think there's something really simple about it and really pretty. Those uh, little sprigs here I have die cut from the Goldmere cardstock. Those are also from the Market Bloom Florals die. Okay, so I did tape off the top. I already, I stamped it here. And I'm going to use the Sparks Mermaid Mermaid Sparkle. This is an acrylic paint with a little bit of water and I'm splattering the background. I taped off the top because I did not want that to have any splatter on it. I just wanted that to stay at the bottom. So now that that's done, we can peel the tape off the top and you guys will be able to see the sentiment. It's such a pretty little scripty sentiment that I just stamped right there and I'm sorry I forgot to record it. I literally just used a uh, acrylic block and stamped it. But that first card is done. I love that watercolor look, it's so soft and pretty. Let's go to our next card. So I have the silicone mat from scrapbook.com. I am using the same uh, mixed media paper. I did use the, oh, uh, salvaged patina distress ink it wasn't the oxide and I'm I swiped it through I sprayed it with my water I swiped it through and then now I'm just going back in and tapping it and I'm drying it between each layer to give a little more detail of that color from the salvaged patina I just love it now that it's dry in my misty I am using the Sunshine Blooms stamp set. These flowers are very similar to the dies in the previous card, but these, I'm gonna use the solid stamps. These are a layering stamp, but I'm not going to layer them. I'm going to ink them up using the coordinating colors to my colored pencils. So Saltwater Taffy and Festive Berries. I'm gonna ink up with Shabby Shutters. That's gonna be my green for my greenery. I did it this way because I want to use the watercolor pencils as a detail to the flowers. Now you could also stamp in different colored inks and use the pencils to add detail, but I wanted to use, I guess essentially tone on tone, <laughs> the same colors. I wanted these things to match. So I'm gonna finish stamping these images on my background 
And as you can see, I'm also spraying, these are the Distress Oxide inks, I'm spritzing with a little bit of water before I stamp them down to give just a little more of that watercolor look. This is the scattered straw that I am stamping for the centers of the flowers. And you can see this really comes together quick on this background. So let's finish up this last little center here. Now let's take our coordinating pencils and add some more detail. So I'm adding a darker, and I'm going pretty dark with the pencil, and then I can just blend it out lightly. So I do two different things here. So I add the pencil directly to the stamped image, and then we're also going to use the paintbrush on, on the tip of the colored pencil, which I'll show you here in just a little bit. So I'm just blending this out. It's just adding a little bit of darker detail at the base of the leaves, which is something I like to do anyways when I'm coloring, so I thought this would be perfect. This is the saltwater taffy, and as you can see, you can see the color that I'm putting down. You could also leave it like this. You don't even have to blend it out, and I'm not using very much water because I think it would just disappear into the ink anyway. So. I'm keeping it quite simple. I'm adding some little lines there and blending this out. And I noticed on this one, it just kind of disappeared. So I thought, okay, let's do something different. Let's do the wet paintbrush on the tip. And that's going to give you more of a concentrated color. And as you can see, you're able to see that colored pencil more. So I'm going to do that on those guys there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of veining to the leaves. And you have to be careful because again, you could blend it out a little too much, which I did on that top one, on that top leaf. So I'm again going to wet my paintbrush, get a good amount of color on uh, from the tip of the colored pencil, and then I can add it to the leaves, which I'll show you here in a second. But look at that great detail that it adds. I loved how this, this one turned out too. I think this was a lot of fun. So getting a lot of color and then you can see I can draw in more of the detail that I accidentally blended out too much. So it worked out perfectly. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the scattered straw. I'm going to just blend it off of the colored pencil. I'm adding a lot of dots here and it's pretty wet. So what I decided to do is come back in with a dry paper towel and just dab it off, which gave it a really nice look in the center. Now I am using Hero Arts, a bold print, I'm going to probably butcher this, uh, uh, Novelle Pro Se is I think what it's called, but I have no idea. But I'm inking that up with black ink, pressing that down, and we're just going to have these little words all over the whole background. I think it's so pretty and I love how that turned out. I'm going to use the picket fence to add a little bit of white detail to the flowers. You really are going to see it the most on the festive berry flowers. On the saltwater taffy you don't see it quite as much and on the leaves I did add a little bit just because it's lighter you don't see it as much but it is still a nice little detail color of course to add a highlight. I am going to use Honeybee Stamps Scalloped A2 Frames. I'm going to use the second largest one, lining it up where I want to die cut it out. And then I'm also going to die cut out a larger, a larger scallop frame from white cardstock, from some Nina cardstock. And I am using birthday banners from scrapbook.com. And this is going to say, happy birthday. I have die cut the shadow piece that's essentially the banner from white cardstock and then the happy birthday from gold mirror cardstock from Spellbinders. And I'm going to adhere that down just with some liquid glue and my reverse tweezers. And then we can hang this across the front of the card. I think it's so pretty. So let's add some dots of glue and then just pop this in place. And you could just, this goes so quick, just add your glue to each one of the letters. You don't have to do one at a time. And then just insert them and it's gonna have a nice white shadow. You could also do the reverse where the shadow part is gold and the sentiment part is white. That would be pretty too. So let's finish up these last couple letters and then we can adhere this down to our card. 
again using some liquid glue and I'm going to put this on a tilt and have one of the sides overlap so I'm kind of filling in a little bit of that open area where there's not a lot of flowers and then you don't also have to cover up all the flowers that you did all of that beautiful watercolor look on top I'm going to add some foam adhesive behind that panel pop it onto the other scalloped frame and then this will adhere to a white A2 size card base Let's take a look at this up close. I think it turned out so lovely. I hope you guys enjoyed these projects. It's simple coloring. It's so exciting. New Distress water Watercolor Pencils is always fun to have in your stash. So thank you guys again for watching and thank you scrapbook.com. Hope you guys have a wonderful day.